Well, welcome to the online meetup this evening for Wednesday, January 4th at goingfitbitbybit.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining me here live on Facebook. I am so glad to have you all here. All right, folks. Uh, listen, tonight we've got some exciting topics to talk about. Tonight we're going to be talking about some of the reasons that diets tend to fail. And again, if you're doing uh, going fit, bitbybit.com, we are not doing a diet. It's not a diet at all. There's no way that I could ever have lost 150 pounds from June 30th of 2016 all the way to December of 2017 and gotten down to the weight I got down to uh, uh, on a diet. That never would have worked. Um, if you see me here in my uh, jackets because I just got home, uh, I'm here in our guest bedroom and uh, it's a little chilly. And so that's why, uh, that's why uh, I'm, uh, I'm still in my jacket. I just snuck in here just in time. Uh, welcome, Ronald. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to be talking about uh, five reasons most diets fail. We're also going to be talking about common obstacles uh, to losing weight tonight. We're going to cover both of those topics. Just want to let you know that for the month of December, uh, when people go out to goingfitbitbybit.com uh, and register, all you have to do is sign in. Uh, we have Louis Yest uh, Yestros from upstate New York. He won the Ulta HR Fitbit, brand new Ulta HR Fitbit. I think they retail for somewhere around a hundred, over a hundred dollars. Um, and we're going to be sending that off to Louie. He just sent me my, his address today. Uh, so he'll be getting that in upstate New York. Anybody who comes to these uh, online meetups is eligible to win. The next one we're giving away is a Fitbit Charge HR. So uh, please go out to goingfitbitbybit.com. Uh, just sign up. That's all it takes. And as long as I see that you've attended one of our daily online meetups here on Facebook, uh, or that I see that you went ahead and clicked it on uh, YouTube or uh, also on Facebook, um, and as long as you're signed up uh, over there, going fit bitbybit.com, uh, in other words, you're on our uh, email list there, um, you are eligible to win it. So for January, we're giving away um, a Charge HR. Uh, it's even a more expensive Fitbit. So they're brand new. Um, they come from the Fitbit company. So uh, we appreciate that from Fitbit. Uh, sponsoring us like that. So tonight, let's talk about some of these reasons that regular diets fail. Let's talk about some of the common obstacles um, to dieting, okay? Um, first of all, I hope you all have made great resolutions. I hope some of you are taking advantage of the 6000by6.com. Every morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, good old Bill is up at 6 a.m. Eastern Time in my living room, live on Facebook. Again, you can find these videos out on YouTube under uh, Bill McDade or out on Going Fit, bitbybit.com. The videos are out there, 6000by6.com. Uh, I am out there uh, exercising. The idea is it's about 40 or 45 minutes and you get in your 6,000 steps on your Fitbit. I'm wearing my favorite Fitbit today. This is uh, my Ionic. Love me my Ionic. I don't know if you can see it there. Love me my Ionic, 5.33 p.m. Okay, uh, and it's just a great way to get your first 6,000 steps in of the day, and that way, um, if you have a very sedentary day like I often have, um, you don't have to worry about it. You can still often hit your Fitbit goals. I have a goal in a mind of 12,000 steps a day. All right. What are, what are five major reasons that regular diets fail? Let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. First of all, first of all, one of these big reasons happens to be, any guesses? You can type in uh, stuff as we go here. I'll be happy to read out any of your responses. One of the big reasons that diets fail first and foremost is uh, because people are not controlling their appetite. They are trying to use willpower to control appetite. Folks, don't try to work against your own biology. Don't try to work against your own natural inclinations, okay? Our appetites will drive us. And if you were online with me yesterday, you know that we talked about metabolic appetite and we talked about hedonic appetites, okay? Metabolic appetites are just exactly what they sound like, right? That is the natural flow of your metabolism, okay? Getting you hungry as your stomach empties out. Hedonic appetite is the appetite that uh, science has discovered and named based on your own emotion, right? So you get stressed out, you want to eat. You get fatigued and tired late at night, you binge, you want to eat, right? That's hedonic appetite. By the way, also driven uh, hormonally, <clears throat> okay? So what happens is 
one of the first reasons diets fail, right, is that people are trying to simply overcome their appetite through sheer, sheer willpower. I'm going to will myself not to be hungry. I swear I won't be hungry. Oh, shit, I'm hungry. Okay, not what we want to do. Not what we want to do, folks, right? Okay, so how are we going to compensate then? What's, what are going to be some of our strategies? First and foremost, love the fat. Love the fat love the protein okay what do i mean by that what i mean is make sure you're including uh, high fat foods high protein foods in your diet why because these are the foods that fill you up and make you feel full these are the foods that satiate you now you might be saying but bill how on earth am i going to lose weight if i'm eating high fat high protein foods believe me you can in order to lose weight you need calorie restriction that's what you need. You need calorie restriction. You do not need fat and protein restriction. You need calorie restriction. And again, one of the brilliant things about wearing a Fitbit device, the later generation Fitbit devices, is they are reading metabolic rate, right? So you're wearing the device 24 seven, it's reading your metabolic rate. So as you're putting information into your phone, here's my phone, uh, I almost always have it with me. I'm sure all, you guys almost always have your phones with you too. When you're putting your, your information into your phone throughout the day, right? It is literally telling you whether or not you can continue to eat. Okay. Ah, somebody's asking me how I get on online meetup. It's uh, Bill uh, McDade at Facebook. There you go. Uh, online now, Ed. All right. So do yourself a favor and plan those meals and eat the fat and eat the protein. So that's the number one thing. Don't try to overcome your appetite via pure, pure will, okay? All right, looks like we have a comment down here. Oh, hey, Eddie, how's it going? All right, please, if you have uh, comments you'd like to participate in, please go ahead and, and do that. We'll, we'll be happy to uh, talk with you. Thanks so much. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Of course, we're going to pin that one. Looking great. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. So do not try and use willpower. Number one reason people fail on diets is they, they think, oh, I'm just going to willpower through it. Number two, okay. Number two is people excessively focus on calories. Okay, guys, I get this question all the time. You know what question I get? Oh my God, Bill, you look great. Oh my God, how many pounds did you lose? Oh, that's 150 pounds which I'm always proud to say, but I lost 150 pounds. Oh, how many calories do you eat every day? I don't know. What? What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. Well, well, well wait a second. How are you losing weight? I'm eating less. Well, wait a second. Hold on. You're eating less, but how do you know you're eating enough less? My hair looked a little funny. How do you know you're eating enough less? Well, I know I'm eating enough less, again, because I'm wearing my Fitbit device 24 seven. It's measuring how much energy I'm burning. Great, fantastic. I don't have to do anything in order for it to measure. I don't have to punch anything in. I don't have to remember to do anything with it. It's simply measuring my metabolic rate. Okay, all right, Bill, I get it. It's measuring your metabolic rate. Totally, totally freaking understand that. Great. Okay, but how many calories are we eating? I don't know, and I don't care how many calories I'm eating, right? Because the other thing that I'm doing is I'm not counting calories. I'm putting my food literally into my device. Oh, there's my sweetheart. I'm putting my food into my device. Now you might say, oh my God, what a pain in the ass. How does that work? You type everything. No, 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 no. It's very simple. Just go into the app and pretty much I'm eating the same similar foods every other day anyway. And the foods are already in there because thousands and thousands and thousands of other people have already put them in there. And oftentimes if the food has a barcode, I'm just pulling up the food and going, Bloop. And it goes, oh, that's Breakstone Cottage Cheese 2%. What are you having, one cup or two today? Oh, I'm having one cup, one cup, poosh, in there, right? And the people that I'm coaching through this right now, we're coaching several people through this now, are like, wow, this is really simple, Bill. And I'm like, yeah, it is really simple. And then all of a sudden, what happens on the Fitbit app is it says, oh, you're still green, dude. You can keep eating. And I go, oh, great. Uh, I'm also going to have a Dunkin' Donuts coffee with extra cream. Oh, and you put in large, large coffee, Dunkin', and it goes, yeah, large, large coffee, Dunkin', with cream or without cream? With cream, poosh. Okay, good. And then all of a sudden, the Fitbit goes green, and you can keep eating. You go, oh, um, I'm going to have a Honeycrisp apple, too. And so you punch in Honeycrisp, and then before you even get to the apple part, it comes up, apple, and it goes, 
well, what is it? Large, medium, small. Oh, medium. Poosh. Okay. And then, it, and then for, instead of being green still, it goes red. And you go, oh, okay. All right, cool. Red, red. All right. Uh, I'm not eating anything else now for my breakfast or for my mid-morning snack or whatever that was that I was eating, whatever meal that was during the day. Now, how many calories did I just count there? How many calories was that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm not counting calories. I'm not counting calories. I'm putting food in. And I know that I'm eating less food, okay? So the number two reason why people fail, and by the way, tonight, for those of you who came a little bit later, we're working on the five reasons the most diets fail. And by the way, if you're doing going fit, bitbybit.com, you're not doing a diet. This is just a total lifestyle change. But the five reasons those diets fail is what we're working on tonight. And then the other thing we're going to talk about are 12 common obstacles to lose your weight. But the number two reason that diets fail is because people are having this excessive focus on calories. Oh, my God, how many calories can I eat today? How many calories can I eat today? One other thing I'm going to say about eating calories uh, for the day, the, the other thing I'm going to say about that is, um, is um, of course, what happens is, you're on a Saturday. You go out and you mow the lawn. Well, not this time yet. You go out and you uh, uh, shovel snow, all right? And then when you're done shoveling the snow, you take the kids skiing. And then when you're done skiing, you head to the gym. Uh, I don't know if anybody needs to do that. But, you know, and then you go to the gym and then you come home. Well, you know, you could probably eat a kielbasa. You could probably have a cheeseburger. You could probably have a big Caesar salad. You could probably have a giant piece of chocolate cake. And then you have all that in your Fitbit and probably still says, green, green, you can keep eating, right? Why is that? Well, it is that way because you've been so incredibly active that day, right? Because the way the Fitbit's set up or the way typically most of the people that I'm working with that I'm coaching through this have set it up is they've set it up to have a 1,000 calorie deficit every day. So what that means is that if you're burning calories as you go, right? Like let's say most days I might burn like uh, 2,000 or well, let's say most days I'm going to burn, let's say 2,500 calories. Um, and that's when I'm not really doing anything particularly active. That means the Fitbit is going to keep me down to food around 1,500 calories because I put it in the 1,000 calorie deficit. Again, I'm not counting the calories. Fit, Fitbit's doing all that for me. But then on those days that I started out by shoveling snow and then I went skiing with the kids and then maybe I went to an ice hockey game and then when I was done with that, I hit the gym. All right, you know, maybe on that day, I burned 5,000 calories, right? So then for me to have a 1,000 calorie deficit is what? Uh, you know, I get to eat 4,000 calories. So, you know, on that day, I could have had a kielbasa and a piece of lasagna and some chocolate cake and then come home and, you know, it would have said, sure, just keep on eating, right? Okay, so that's, that's what's going on. And that's why, that's why when people come up and ask me, hey, Bill, well, how many calories are you eating every day? I go, well, I don't know, because I don't count calories. That's not what I'm doing. So that's the number two reason people fail. They get this excessive focused in on calories. We don't do that. That's number two reason. Okay, uh, number three uh, reason why people fail um, on diets. And I can't say this often enough. You know, those 1980s, if I could go back to the 1980s, there's a couple of things I would just freaking slap right in the face. One of them would be a one of them would be a few of those fashion choices. Uh, you know, maybe the peg pants, I'm not sure. The other one would be that goddamn low fat, no fat movement where they took the fat out of all those foods and put sugar in instead. That must have been the most unhealthy thing that we could ever have done in this country. Now, at the time it was done, I'm going to say, I'm going to assume positive intent, that was done with good intention. That really was done with good intention. We thought that fat was the enemy. Okay. We thought fat was the enemy. It's not. Okay. The third, the third reason why diets fail most often is because people are still focused in on eating low fat. People throw that notion out the goddamn window. We love fat. Eat fat. Eat unsaturated fats. Those are the best ones because when you eat unsaturated fats, you drive down your triglycerides, you drive uh, down your 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 uh, your bad cholesterol, and you drive up your good cholesterol when you're eating the unsaturated fats. Okay, um, you want to try and stay away from your saturated fats, and you want to eliminate your trans fats. So those are your hydrogenated oils. Um, 
fats, right? But generally speaking, we love fats. We love all of our unsaturated fats. We love all of our nuts. We love all of our fish. We, we you know, I, I do not stay away from butter, okay? We love dairy products. Now, listen, if you, if you have a, a medical reason, you know, you're lactose intolerant, okay, that's a whole other story. But listen, generally speaking, we love fats. People who go on low, specifically low-fat diets, there is plenty of medical evidence now to support this. People who go on low-fat diets fail at much, much, much higher rates in terms of weight loss than people who go on other diets that are not low-fat. So do yourself a favor. Don't set yourself up to fail by saying, I'm going to go on a low-fat diet unless you have a very specific medical reason for doing it. Okay. <sighs> Go back to the 1980s. Get in that time machine and get rid of those peg pants and get rid of those goddamn low-fat everything that they did and then they umped the sugar to make it taste better. Um, okay. Um, that was reason number three, people going on a low-fat diet. Uh, all right. Reason number four. Ooh, this is a big one. And this is one that, um, this is absolutely key. Again, whether you go out to 6,000 by six, that's 6,000 steps by 6 a.m. We, we try and do that every weekday. I'll be doing it again tomorrow morning, okay? Or whether you go out to going fit, fitbybit.com, and you join our, we have a special right now, 28 pounds, 28 days, $28. I will personally coach you through your weight loss experience. I'm doing that with a few select clients now. I will do it with anybody pretty much that's on here until I hit my max limit, okay? Listen, this is important, and this is something that I did as well. The fourth reason that people fail when they try and lose weight, okay, is that they need a larger support team, and they need medical assistance. Okay, a larger support team and medical assistance. So what, what happened? They went out on their own. They picked a diet. They signed up for, you know, one of the super uber popular weight loss programs, right? And they started going to meetings. And then all of a sudden, they showed up for their weigh-in. They showed up for their online meeting. And then they binged or something didn't work out. And they stopped going. And then they got depressed. And they go, well, I tried it. And I lost you know, I tried it and I lost 15 pounds and then I kept trying it and then it didn't work. And then I eventually gained the weight back. And, yeah. Um, yes. Anyway. Well, hey, hey, uh, how are the kids doing? Anyway, how are those kids doing? Huh? Okay, guys, look, there, there are probably excellent reasons for why you're overweight. There were excellent reasons for why I was overweight. I mean, very compelling reasons for why I was overweight, okay? Um, and you know what? Um, I needed help, okay? And so when you come out to going fit, bitbybit.com, and you sign up and you get your personal coach, me, to start with, okay? When we start you in on that program, the minute that we recognize that after you have your plan, after you have your Fitbit, after you're doing things the right way, the minute we see that, oh, okay, you know what? When was the last time you got your blood work done with your doctor? Ah, oh, okay, let's get your blood work done. Let, I would like you to have a conversation with your doctor about your new diet plan. I've given you a meal plan. I want you to discuss that meal plan with your physician. Okay, good. All right, we got that. Okay, great. Now, I want to talk to you about some of the weight loss medications that are on the market, okay? And there are several weight loss medications. And I've taken several of the weight loss medications, and I know what they do. And they can be very effective for certain things, okay? And I understand. Now, I am not a physician. I'm not going to give you medical advice online, and I'm not going to give you medical advice one-on-one. -on -one. But I'm going to tell you about my experience with, with weight loss medications. And then I'm going to point you in the direction of qualified medical professionals. And we're going to build up your team as you need your team built up, whether that's your own personal physician, whether that is a, uh, a therapist, or whether that's a dietitian, um, or whether that's simply a personal trainer 
in addition to your, your personal fitness coach myself, okay? But the important thing is to recognize that we're going to be persistent about your success here, okay? In other words, it's not wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Here's your plan. Oh, it didn't work for you? Oh, all right, sorry, bye-bye, right? Too often, the fourth reason people fail at a diet is because they sign up for the one-size-fits-all program, right? It doesn't work, and they have underlying medical reasons for why the one-size-fits-all plan won't work, right? I had underlying medical reasons for why it didn't work. I was lucky enough to be persistent enough to get medical professional help, and that made all the difference in the world because now I have a support team, right? I have my physician, I have my therapist, I have my trainer, I have my psychiatrist, and then I have mentors, right? All of these people are part of my support system, right? And when you come to goingfitbitbybit.com, we're gonna help you have that set up as well, right? Because we're not in it for one or two little things. We're in it to make sure that you become successful. Okay, that's reason number four, why people fail, and that's how we're gonna help you succeed. Reason number five, okay, reason number five, okay? And this, this, is, this is the final thing that going fit, bitbybit.com helps you with, is people go into these things without a plan. How many people start into their New Year's resolution? My resolution is I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Oh, how are you going to do that? Oh, I'm going to go on a diet. Oh, what, are you, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to do, uh, you know, I'm going to do uh, uh, Mrs. Greg, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go uh, watch my, uh, I'm going to go watch my scale, or I'm going to go, uh, you know, I'm going to go order from uh, somebody's system, or, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, okay, and, and then what? And then what? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna, you know, they they got it figured out. I'm sure. Really, really, they have it figured out. Oh, okay. And that's your plan. That's your plan. Hmm. I wonder how many of those people who start down that road actually succeed. I wonder. Okay. Now listen. I'm sure that there are people who do succeed. Okay. But. We want to maximize the number of people. We want to make it possible so that the maximum number of people can actually make the most of their effort, right? So we want to have the most comprehensive plans. We want to walk people. We want to take their hand and walk them down the path, okay? And that's what we're here to do. We are small and we are one-on-one -on -one and we are going to make that happen one-on-one -on -one with a one-on-one -on -one plan. Right now, we text, we phone call, we, we walk over to people's houses, right? We are here with the plan, okay? And that's the last reason why people fail. They don't have a plan for themselves when they decide that they're ready to commit to weight loss, okay? So there's your five reasons, right? Just to repeat them. One, they try and use willpower instead of science to control their appetite. Two is they focus on calories, okay? Uh, it, it, you know, a focus on calories will ultimately fail. Three is they're trying to eat a low-fat diet. That sucks. Four is uh, they actually need some medical assistance, and they don't have a team set up to help them. And then five is they don't have a plan, okay? Those are the reasons uh, that people most often fail when they go ahead and try and lose some weight, okay? All right. now. Uh, let me very quickly, because that took 25 minutes, it took a little longer than I thought. Let me, uh, let me just go through. Oh, and by the way, for everybody who is online tonight, do not forget, we gave away an Ulta HR, an over $100 device. Uh, Louis Yesros uh, from upstate New York won it, he gave me his address today, and now I can mail it out tomorrow. We have an even nicer device that Fitbit gave us. It's the Charge HR, Okay. That is going to be won by somebody in January. Please get right out to goingfitbitbybit.com in the little sign-in area. Sign in. You got to create an account. It takes all of putting your first and last name and I think your email address. There might be a couple other things you put in and you say create an account, right? Do that. I make sure I see you at an online meetup 
right? And then that's it. You qualify uh, to, to win that, um, that charge HR sometime in January, okay? All right. Now, uh, let me just cover these 12. I'm going to obviously I'll cover these a little bit more quickly, but these are the 12 most common obstacles for losing weight. And I'll run through these uh, pretty quickly. OK. All right. 12 of the most common obstacles of losing weight. Don't have time to cook. OK. Number one, uh, number one uh, 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 way around that is try and give yourself some extra time for prep work. OK. Give yourself some extra time. Do a little extra planning. Number two. You hate being hungry, okay? I hate being hungry too. Um, so my advice to you is to try and load up on some low calorie food, uh, maybe high in fiber. One way to do that is I chop up a ton of vegetables, like almost uh, three pounds of vegetables and I saute them um, in olive oil and, and some delicious spices. Um, and then that's something that I'd let myself plow through and eat as much as I want. Totally fills up my belly anytime I want. Plus it gives me a lot of fiber, so it helps on the other end of things too. Um, Three is you say you don't like the taste of healthy food. All right, folks, we're all adults. Well, let's get out there and experiment. Experiment, experiment, experiment until you find something that you like. If you can't find something like in the stores that you go to now, try new stores. We Most of you live either in the greater San Francisco area, the greater Los Angeles area, the greater Denver area, the greater Chicago area, the greater Dallas or Austin, Texas area, or the greater New York City or greater Miami area. Of all the people I know, ooh, or you live in Europe, of all the people I know, that's where you all live, okay? So get out there and try some new stores if you, if you really are having trouble finding healthy things you like to eat. Um, you think nutritious food is too expensive. A lot of people do feel that way. Guys, I uh, don't know what to tell you. Try to make smart choices around that. Try to buy in bulk. Hopefully there's a Costco near you. That might be able to help out as well. You may have some fitness obstacles. Well, I'm telling you right now, there's a really awesome guy who gets on at 6 o'clock in the morning every day Eastern, East Coast time. And by the way, if you can't get on 6 o'clock EST, you can, uh, those, those videos are all saved online. Just go out to goingfitbitbybit.com and uh, they're, they're saved there. You can watch those uh, videos anytime you want and you can work out for 45 minutes for free. So there you go. Um, uh, if you don't have time to exercise, you can exercise then at any time. Um, some of you are pushing yourself too hard too often. Give yourself a break, guys. Make sure you schedule a day off. Uh, that also goes with my pleasure principle. Um, some of you are relying on workouts to do it all. Remember, you are going to have to calorie restrict. You cannot rely on yourself to run a marathon every day so that you can have half a chocolate cake every day or whatever it is you love to eat. Okay. It's not all about exercising so that you can continue to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Okay. Can't, can't do it that way. Uh, some of you are getting older, your joints ache. I totally get it. Um, I have those aches and pains too. Uh, go low impact. Um, a lot of the exercises that I do at 6 a.m. are, can be made low impact. If you have any questions about that, email me at bill at going fit bit by bit .com. Uh, here's some of the emotional obstacles and then we're going to close it up for the night. Um, you're just not feeling that motivated. Do yourself a favor, set long-term goals and short-term goals and meet the short-term goals. And again, if you're having problems with that, if you can't think of any short-term goals, if you can't think of any long-term goals, email me. I can help you with that. I'll walk you through that. We can talk, we can text. Um, listen, you might be embarrassed at failed attempts. Well, listen, nobody on earth has failed at more things more often, more times than one. Okay? So if you think you're embarrassed because you failed, let me tell you about it. I have failed. You name it, I've failed at it. Okay? So if you're feeling like you failed at it, just come talk to me. All right? Don't be embarrassed. Uh, your willpower disappears in the face of temptation. Well, you know. I hate to say this, but no shit, Sherlock. Everybody's willpower fails in the face of temptation. We need to find out a way to keep from being so tempted, okay? And we've got ways to help you with that, all right? So there's a whole bunch of common obstacles to losing weight. And, you know, we really do have some methods and some strategies uh, to helping you out with those, okay? So those not quite as good as the uh, five reasons most diets fail. Um, but that's what we have for tonight. Now, one last exciting announcement. If you happen to be in the greater New York City area, 
we have something brewing here. I'm not sure if we're going to do it for Valentine's Day or if we're going to do it for uh, St. Patrick's Day. But um, I would love to hear feedback on it. We're going to have a little contest. And it's going to be like a 50-50 contest, okay? Um, oh, thank you, Christine. Totally appreciate it. Uh, just Sorry, I just saw that. Uh, in the contest, I'm gonna, we're going to do a weigh-in, a physical weigh-in. I think we'll have it at Garden State Plaza in Paramus, New Jersey. Seems like a central location. If we have enough New Yorkers and we, we do it in Manhattan, we'll do it in Manhattan. But we need an indoor spot because it's cold right now. And what we'll do is like a 45-day or a 30-day challenge. Everybody will need to put in a registration fee, say 20 or 40 bucks, right? And then like the top two or three people who lose the most weight, the most weight, are going to get to split the 50-50 in cash. What a great way to motivate, right? So hopefully we can get 50 or 100 people who are in, right, to drop in their 20 or 40 bucks or whatever. We'll get a nice big pool going. Everybody can come and weigh in. I'll take photos of everybody on the same scale, so we'll make sure that we have the same people weighing in on the same date, on the same scale, so it'll all be fair. We'll collect all the money. Uh, you know, it'll be based on how many people we have registering, um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, to be a nice big prize if we get enough, uh, enough people, uh, of course it won't be gambling, uh, you know, we'll have a set prize and all this kind of stuff, right? But, uh, uh, should be a lot of fun and then we'll base it on, uh, how many, how many pounds, uh, people can drop and we'll, and we'll make sure that we have, uh, more than one winner. Right, because uh, otherwise it could just be the you know the most giant guy that comes right. Uh, but uh, you know maybe maybe we'll have maybe we'll have two categories right. Maybe we'll have uh, uh, one guy, one girl, or one giant guy, one giant girl, and then you know one smaller guy, one smaller girl, something like that. So tell me what you think of the idea. Tell me if you would be in for something like that. Uh, we you know we'd have a weigh in you know on on whatever date and you know time people think would be most great. Uh, I'd only want to do it if we had a whole bunch of folks in, so it'd be a lot of fun and a lot of money. Um, that's my exciting announcement. I sure hope you all have a lovely evening. I'm headed down to Hackensack to the Ice House to go coach a wonderful group of kids, uh, show them some awesome hockey stuff, have fun coaching them. Boy, I hope you all have a lovely, lovely evening. Remember to head out to goingfitbitbybit.com, sign in so you can win, you can be eligible to win that uh, Charge HR. And remember, it all starts with Fitbit. Love you. Bye-bye.